In this video, I will be trying to help out one of our viewers and at the same time maybe helping out a few other people who are dealing with a sagging roof ridge and an older house that has 2x4 roof rafters and maybe a 1x6 ridge and maybe you don't even have a ridge at all. And at the same time, try and give you a brief explanation of what's going on here when you might have rafter ties going across. And of course, some of you think that they're ceiling joists and they aren't. These are rafter ties. These are meant to prevent the walls from spreading out. And this would work kind of like this. As there is weight applied to the roof rafters, maybe from snow or something else, or even just the weight of the roof itself, if you do not have the rafter ties, then the weight of the roof eventually is going to sag down, or should I say could sag down. And without the rafter ties, the walls will actually spread out. As the walls spread out, the roof rafters and the ridge will start to move down also. And now if you do have a roof that's in really bad shape, you might need to remove and replace it. However, in this video, I'm going to provide you with an idea that might work. And this is probably where I'm going to lose most of you because I'm going to say that it might work. It won't always work. And this, of course, is going to depend upon the existing damage to the existing roof. Now, the first thing I'm going to suggest would be to use at the minimum a 4x6. And I believe the individual who emailed this question wanted to use a 4x4. And I just don't think a 4x4 is going to be enough, but I'm not going to discount the fact that we can't bolt them together or somehow connect a few of these together to make something a little stronger than a 4x4. At the same time, I need to point out that these aren't always going to be easy to get in. And you might need to cut a little more off of one side at the top so that you'll be able to shove it into this section so that you can pull it into the other side. And you can see here where this one's a little bit shorter. And yours shouldn't be that much shorter than it needs to be to get it in and then pull it over. So here you can see where we're a little bit farther away. It'd be nice to have it a little closer to maximize the length of our beam so that we can have as much of the beam sitting on top of the wall as possible. Now, as a general rule of thumb in construction, the minimum distance here is an inch and a half. So keep that in mind because once you pull this one over, you're going to have between an inch and three quarters and an inch and a half on each side. And of course, here you can see where the beam is shaped to the top of the roof rafters, and that'd be on both sides. And as we can see here, it's just sitting about an inch and three quarters on each side. And again, if you can figure out another way to get it in, go for it to where you won't have to notch as much. But in order to slide this in on this side, you're going to have to take a little more off of this side than you will on the other side. Again, unless you can figure out another way to do it. So here we have it. It's a little bit lower than the other side. If you remember on the other side, it was just to the bottom of the roof rafter. And of course, now that we have our first beam in, we can cut a second beam. And again, if you want to make this a 4x10 or something a little larger, a 4x4, whatever you want, these are just examples. And this is not structural engineering information because I am not a structural engineer. So I'm just kind of throwing this out there. And if you think it will work for you, then give it a shot. And with the upper beam here, we're going to be able to cut it a little bit closer to the top of the roof rafter than we did with this one here. So here it's sticking over past a little bit, but we're really not going to have that on the other side. Now I did put a jack along with some type of a post that we're going to be able to use to raise the ridge. But I need to point out, and hopefully this makes sense, that you're not going to be able to attach the beam to the wall framing on both sides. Now you will be able to attach it on one side, but this other side needs to be loose because as you raise the roof ridge, there's a good chance that you're going to be pulling the walls back in. And that's not going to happen happen if this beam is nailed at both ends of the framing plates. And you might even need to raise the beam a little bit. So let's say that you raise it, you've got it supported, there's a lot of weight on the beams, then there's also going to be a lot of weight on the walls and this could prevent the wall from moving. So you might need to bring the jack back over here and raise this up just a little bit and then watch this as it pops back in, it'll snap in a little bit. And again, hopefully that makes sense. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at the other side where you can see where the beams are going to be shaped right on the money. Next up, let's go ahead and grab a piece of plywood. I'm using half inch plywood here. You can use larger or smaller plywood. And I'm just kind of using this to connect the two beams together to make them a little stronger. And hopefully this actually does make them a little stronger. I mean, if there's one thing I can't stand about most of the people that show you how to do repairs on YouTube is the fact that they don't show you what it looks looks like five or ten years from now. I'm not trying to be deceptive and hopefully these ideas will work but again no guarantee. And there are other ways to connect these beams together. I've seen it done before where they drill a hole all the way down the center and then grab a long bolt with some washers on the end and then bolt it together. And this is actually something that I've seen done before that does work. But don't get misled and don't think that by putting two four by six beams together that are five and a half inches wide, providing you with a total of 11 inches that you have a four by 12 beam. That's probably not going to happen. However, you might have something strong enough that's going to allow you to make this type of a repair and raise the ridge a little bit, or at the very least, prevent it from sagging any further. So next up on the list would be to add another beam and you would follow the same installation instructions as you did for this one. And I really can't tell you where to put them in your roof because you could move these beams over a little further in either direction. So you could space them a little closer together or further apart if you need to install a shorter or a longer beam here. And in order to get this beam in here, you might need to remove one of these rafters ties or even another rafter tie. And if you're going to put a full length beam all the way across here, then the beam might need to go in first. So again, hopefully that makes sense. And then you could always place either one, two, or three jacks on top of the beam and then start raising the ridge. And if there isn't a ridge, then you might be able to start raising the rafters. And if you have any questions about any part of the process that just doesn't make any sense or something that I might have missed, then feel free to leave those questions in the comment area or email them to me and I will answer them as soon as possible. And of course you can see that the beam is located in the center underneath the ridge and has a variety of different uh, supports here. And you can see this one here, I kind of notched it at both ends so they could slide under there. And then that one you could always screw to the side just like this one here where we're using a 4x4, four four. you could just simply screw it to the side of the ridge. And of course our brace here, we're using another brace. However, this might not be necessary, just depends upon your project. Because if the roof isn't moving because it's got solid sheathing on top of it and it hasn't moved in years and something like this probably isn't going to make that much of a difference. And again, another method here, we have a 2x4 going underneath the ridge and then something on the side and you would just simply nail or attach this board to the ridge or even to the rafter if you didn't have a ridge and then attach it to the other supporting block and then to the beam. Now even though I'm not showing all of the connections everywhere, everything in this example needs to be firmly secured to the other components and that could be done by a variety of different methods including using straps and framing anchors and different types of building hardware. So again, just a different method. Here we have a 4x4 with a notch in it. Here we just have a 4x4 under the ridge. And here we have two 2x4s turned around. This one is shaped like this. On this side here, and then this one here, we just simply used two of them. One that would look like this, and then we just simply flipped one of these around and then nailed it to the other side here. Another method for this would be to lower the beam and use hangers. Instead of having the beam sit on top of the other beams, you could simply hang it off of them. And again, you might need to do this for a variety of different reasons. And if this is the case, you might need to notch the rafter ties around the beam or connect them to the beam somehow. Okay, a view of the hanger. And here we're using a 4x10. However, you can use a smaller or a larger beam. And here I pulled the plywood back a little bit and connected it to the beam itself. And I actually like this idea better instead of going over the plywood. But again, if you use longer nails or screws, whatever you were using to attach the hanger to the beam, then it might be okay anyway. 
And here I went ahead and installed the other cross bracing so that I could have at least one connection to the gable wall here. And of course this goes all the way through and can connect with nails or screws into the gable stud and then you could use framing hardware like we have here attaching the brace connector to the beam giving us a solid all the way through connection. Definitely another thing to think about along with a view from above. And if you're looking for a little more support, you could always add a four x four or something larger. And I really don't see where something like this would be a problem. And in some cases, you're even gonna be able to have it sit on top of the footing, at least partially. And again, just another suggestion, view of it from the other side. And of course, a four by six, something a little larger. And of course, it is notched over the footing there and sitting directly on top of the garage slab. You can add whatever you want Want. you want to put some treated on here knock yourself out and of course framing anchors will be handy anything to connect it securely and maybe even a strap here but you do need to make sure that everything is connected nice and tight along with a view of how the beam is still going to be underneath the roof sheathing and that brings us to the end of this video so if any of this made sense or helped you a little bit then make sure you hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to visit our website website I believe if you go to the repairs section the repairs tab and then click on the framing tab and then click on the roof framing tab you should be able to find a few more repairs like this one